I was going to preach from our gospel lesson today, but as Barb was reading that second lesson so well, thank you, Barb, I saw that look on all your faces that went, what the heck is Paul talking about? So I thought maybe we should look at our Romans lesson. That's Romans 7, verses 15 to 25. You can have it out in front of you in Bible or in, uh, on your phones or whatever it takes. When I was going through school, this may surprise you to learn, or maybe it won't if you've ever seen my office, but I was not terribly organized. In fact, I was kind of a disaster area. And all through school, I had teachers telling me the exact same thing. They would always say, Dave, you need to get organized. And I'd try and get organized, and I'd fail. I tried to have separate folders for everything. It never worked. It was, it was awful. So that came to eighth grade parent-teacher conferences. I was expecting yet again to get the Dave, you need to get organized lecture. But God bless Mr. K. Because Mr. K looked at my parents and then looked at me and went, Dave, I bet that if you've been here in your whole life, you need to get organized. Correct. And then he said, if you're not organized by now, let's be honest, you're not going to be. And then he said, so here, from here on out, the goal is not to get organized. The goal is damage control. This was the greatest word of gospel I'd ever heard in school, right? I mean, I'm serious about this. This was like, like the sound of Jesus' voice just echoing. It was pure grace. And it was grace because whereas everybody had been telling me just do it, through school, finally somebody was telling me, yeah, that's not going to happen, so you can stop trying on that standard. Paul is writing to this congregation in Rome. He doesn't know them yet. He's introducing himself in the book of, in the book of Romans. So Paul's way of introducing himself is to introduce his entire theology. Aren't you glad I didn't do this to you when, I, when we were interviewing together? Those on the call committee are like, yes. <laughs> so in the middle of Romans 7, what Paul is talking about is Paul is talking about the way sin works in our life. And Paul finally comes to this conclusion in chapter 7, verse 15. He says, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. It's like everybody telling me you should get organized, right? I know I wanted to get organized, I just couldn't. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if, I do, now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, says Paul. What he's saying is that, yeah, you know what? Because I don't want to do that thing that I just did, that implies that it was wrong to do. That implies that there's something out there in the world telling me you should do that thing. It implies that the law is good. I couldn't get organized the way people wanted me to get organized. But the fact that everybody kept telling me to, and the fact that I knew that I needed something to do, that implied that it was a good idea to do. And then Paul says, But it is, in fact, no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. Anybody who's ever been addicted to anything know, knows this feeling that Paul is describing. You can will to be free of your addiction, but just saying, I want to quit, is an awful lot harder than actually doing it. 
I remember there was one Lent where I tried to give up smoking. I was not going to smoke for four, all 40 days of Lent. And then that was going to be it. I was going to be free of smoking. It was a great idea. Didn't work at all. Didn't work at all because quickly along the way, I kept coming up with all sorts of little exceptions, right? Oh, well, Sunday mornings don't count for Lent, so that's technically a, that's a celebration day. It's not a fast day, so I can smoke on Sundays. And then, oh, my friend had a really stressful experience. I need to comfort him. I'll smoke with him. That's great. I think I made it about 10 days. We can will what is right, but we find ourselves not able to do it. And it happens all the time in our life. We can will ourselves to be kind and nice, and yet we write all those things we write to each other that are nasty on Facebook. We can will ourselves to be patient, but we find ourselves being angry. We can will ourselves to be organized, but we find ourselves being a disorganized mess. So that may seem like bad news. That may seem like an awful feeling, right? Okay, we're trapped. We can will what is right, but that's the best that we can manage. We can't do it. But Paul says that there is another force working within us. It's not just our inability to do what we know we should do. It's not just that. It's not just sin working in us, says St. Paul. So Paul ends up asking, who will rescue me from this body of death? Who will rescue me from this mess that I've put myself in? Who will rescue me from all the things that I want to do, but I can't manage to do them? Who will free me from the addiction? Who will free me from the nastiness? Who will free me from the impatience? And then Paul says at the end of our our reading, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because it's Jesus who comes to us and says, yeah, you don't have to do that. Yeah, stop trying to live up to that impossible standard. You don't have to do all those things just to be loved, says Jesus. You are loved anyway. You didn't have to do anything to be rescued from death. In fact, you don't have to live up to this standard to be rescued from death. I already died for you on the cross. You are already rescued from death. Better yet, I am working within you, says Jesus. You ever have this feeling, right, where um, you do something and it's incredibly kind and loving and you're like, where the heck did that come from? Right? It's not the where did that bad thing come from, I know where that one comes from, but it's the kind one, right, that kind of gets you, you're incredibly generous and you're like, I'm not usually that generous with people. I'm not usually that quick to forgive. That's Jesus Christ working in you, that there's, not, there's more than one force at will working in you. And this is why Jesus can say at the end of our gospel reading, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If everything that Jesus commands us to do were up to us, If everything that Jesus commands us to do depended on us willing it and doing it, we'd kind of be sunk. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus Christ is working within us and his burden is easy, his yoke is light. So Paul can say truthfully and honestly and miraculously, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord who rescues us from death and rescues us from all the things that we want to do but we just can't manage. Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Tell you the truth, I'm still not organized. My desk is pretty clean at the moment, actually, for me. I'll say that. 
I'm still not organized, but the gospel lesson here is that you don't have to be. You don't have to be organized. You don't have to have it put together. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have a great marriage. You don't have to be healthy. You don't have to be free of addiction. You don't have to be any of those things for God to love you, for God already loves you. God is already working in you. God is already a part of you, and his burden is light. And thanks be to God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.